In this next session, we are going to look at marginal and absorption costing. Now, the focus of this area is to understand the difference between marginal and absorption costing, and primarily to understand why our profit figures may be different under each costing system, and be able to reconcile marginal costing profits to absorption costing profits, or vice versa. Now, the key difference, then, that creates these profit differences are that in a marginal costing system, our inventory is valued at the variable production cost per unit. Whereas in an absorption costing system, our inventory is valued at the production cost per unit. Now, because we place a different value on our opening and closing inventory in each of the two costing systems, if we have inventory movements, meaning if our closing inventory is different to our opening inventory units, there will be differences in our profit figures. Let's have a look at our first question. <coughs> so we're asked in this question, what would be the profit for the next period using marginal costing? And what have we been told? We've been told the following budgeted information relates to a manufacturing company for next period. And we have our production and sales units, as well as our fixed production and fixed selling costs. The normal level of activity is 14,000 units per period. Using absorption costing, the profit for next period has been calculated as 36 thousand dollars. Okay, so we're going to have to reconcile this absorption costing profit of 36,000 to our marginal costing profit. To do this, there are two things we need to understand. First of all, we have to be able to calculate the difference in profits. The difference between marginal and absorption costing profits will always be the movement in inventory multiplied by the fixed production overhead cost per unit. So if we have a look back at our question, we have the information we need to calculate the difference in profits. So we've been told that our production was 14,000 units and our sales were 12,000 units. Now, our movement in inventory is going to be the difference between our opening and closing inventory. We haven't been told what our opening and closing inventory levels are or were, but we do have the information we need to calculate the movement in inventory. If we just assume that our opening inventory was zero units and we've produced... 14,000 units and sold 12,000 units. Well, if we've produced 14,000 units and sold only 12,000, our closing inventory will be the remaining 2,000 units. So our inventory movement then is an increase of 2,000 units. The next bit of information we need is our fixed production overhead cost per unit. We've been told that our fixed production costs 
are 63,000. And our budgeted level of activity is 14,000. So our fixed production cost per unit is just our fixed production costs in total divided by our budgeted level of activity, 14,000 units. So that gives us 4.5. We don't include the selling costs because these are a non-production cost. So filling that information in then, our movement in inventory, 2,000 multiplied by our fixed production cost per unit of 4.5, that gives us a difference in profits of 9,000. So now we can calculate our marginal costing profit. So the second thing we need to understand then is will our marginal costing profit be higher than or lower than our absorption costing profit. Now, there were a number of key rules about inventory movements which are crucial in order to be able to attempt questions on this area. The first rule is that if our closing inventory is greater than our opening inventory, then our absorption costing profit will always be greater than our marginal costing profit. So if our absorption costing profit is 36,000, we know that the difference is 9,000, and we know that our marginal costing profit has to be lower than the absorption costing profit. Then we must subtract the difference. So our marginal costing profit will be 27,000. If we have a look back at our multi-choice answers, we can see then that the correct answer is B. Now, a second question on this area is a little bit more challenging. So we're asked in this question, which of the following combination of profits and losses for the two months is consistent with the above data. And we've been given the absorption costing profit or loss and the marginal costing profit or loss across two different months. Now we're told a company manufactures and sells a single product. In two consecutive months, the following levels of production and sales in units occurred. So we're given our information for two months. The opening inventory for month one was 400 units, and profits or losses have been calculated using absorption and marginal costing. Now, the thing that makes this more challenging is that it's not actually possible for us to calculate the profit or loss under each of our two systems. Instead, we need to look at our inventory movements for each of our two months, and if we do that, it will provide us with the information we need to understand which of these options, A, B, C, or D, is the only possible correct answer. Let's have a look at our inventory movements for month one, first of all. So we're told the opening inventory was 400 units. In month one, we're told that our production was 3,900 units and our sales were 3,800 units, which means our closing inventory is 500 units. So, we know then that our closing inventory is greater than our opening inventory in month one. Now, what does this tell us then about our profits under marginal and absorption costing systems? Well, if our closing inventory is greater than our opening inventory, 
then our absorption costing profit must be greater than the marginal costing profit. If we have a look back at our possible answers, just looking at month one. Answer option A suggests that month one profits under absorption costing are $200 and under marginal costing are a loss of $400. Is this possible? Well, yes, it is, because the absorption costing is greater than the marginal costing. Answer option B, though, suggests that absorption costing gives a loss of 400 and marginal costing a gain of 200. So we can eliminate answer option B. It is not possible. The month one absorption costing profits have to be higher than the marginal costing profits. Likewise, for the same reason, we can eliminate answer option D. So the correct answer has to be either A or C. Now, if we do the same thing for the month two, see what the inventory movements were there, then we should have the information we need to know whether A or C is the correct answer. So in month two, then, our opening inventory will be 500 units. So that's just our closing inventory from month one. Our production was 4,200 units, sales 4,400. That gives us a closing inventory of 300 units. So now our closing inventory is less than our opening inventory, indicating then that our absorption costing profit has to be less than our marginal costing profit. So let's see which of our answers is consistent with that. If we look at answer A, answer A suggests in month two, absorption costing profits were 4,400, marginal costing less than that at 3,200. Well, we know that's not possible. In month two, the marginal costing profits have to be higher. So the correct answer then must be C.